I have had the pleasure of working with Greg Bialecki now for about seven years since he started. Uh, this was before he was secretary, but when he was in charge of business development for the Commonwealth, and then uh, not that long after that became secretary uh, for housing and economic development for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have always had, with uh, Greg and with the Patrick administration, a close, and I think I can now say after seven years, an enduring relationship in the promotion of smart growth and economic development of the right kind in the right place here in the Metro Boston region and, of course, throughout the state. Uh, Greg is here today because he recognizes that parking is one of those thorny issues that affects how you grow and where you grow. It isn't just an esoteric issue. It really has impacts on the ground for what you build, where you build it, and whether it works once you've got it done. And uh, so we felt that it was ideal uh, if he could uh, spare the time to give us a little bit of an overview of how the parking issue relates to the administration's planning ahead for growth campaign, which of course MAPC is deeply involved in, mainly through the technical assistance that we provide to cities and towns on a daily basis. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to present to you uh, the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, Greg Bialecki. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, with you today and for all of the things we've done in partnership for more than seven years now. So, um, uh, and on behalf of Governor Patrick and all of us, the administration, let me thank you uh, for co-sponsoring with our uh, Department of Housing and Community Development uh, this great conference uh, today, which apparently is a pretty popular topic uh, that uh, we're flowing out into the hallways of the ballroom here. So uh, as Mark suggested, I thought it was the most, there's a lot of people you're going to hear from today who know a lot more about what smart parking strategies uh, look like and how they work than I do. Uh, and it made most sense for me to just talk for a couple minutes, I think, about the question of what do smart parking strategies have to do with the economic future of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? Uh, and as Mark suggested, um, we think actually it has quite a lot to do with the economic future of the Commonwealth, and I thought I'd take a couple minutes to tell you why uh, the governor and I are feel that way. Uh, first of all, for context, is to say that uh, the governor and I feel very bullish about what's happening in the uh, Massachusetts economy right now. Uh, for those of you who have lived and worked in this state for a long time, like me, uh, you know that major national recessions um, have not been good things for Massachusetts, in both in 1989 and in 2001, uh, when we had a major national recession, Massachusetts fell a lot more than most other states, and we had a lot more difficult time uh, getting back on our feet again. Uh, so when uh, the economy started to unravel nationally in 2008, uh, that was a scary prospect for all of us, not just what was happening in the country, but especially what would happen here. And fortunately, uh, history did not repeat itself, uh, and for a whole variety of reasons. Uh, Massachusetts actually did much better uh, than the U.S. economy as a whole. We fell less than the rest of the country, both in uh, uh, our gross domestic product, employment, housing prices, all those fell less. We turned the corner faster than the rest of the country. We've grown faster uh, since then. Uh, last year actually was a notably good year on a number of, of those scores. We added 55,000 jobs last year, which is the most we've had in a single year since 2000, uh, the year 2000. Uh, we actually added population at a significant rate last year. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, we added about three-quarters of 1% population in one year. That was about the same, uh, actually, as the United States as a whole. It's the first time we've done that, had population growth, um, same as the United States, I think, for decades, 1980, someone has looked up for me. And um, so those are all really exciting things, uh, and I think we feel that, that uh, the economy has a lot of continuing stress, stre uh, strength in it, and we'll continue to see... Uh, that success. We're focused, I think, on the public and private side on our strength, which is building and growing an innovation economy. Uh, it's working in a number of different sectors, life sciences, clean energy, technology. So unlike some other states in the country that are worried about how am I going to recover, uh, that don't uh, still are really struggling with that. Massachusetts has crossed the point now. There's actually a lot more jobs in Massachusetts today than there were uh, previously in the year 2008. Uh, so we can now think, move our thinking away from 
uh, how are we going to get out of this hole into thinking how do we continue to grow successfully. So I think we have the economic conditions uh, for good growth uh, for this state for the, for the coming decade. Um, but one of the challenges for Massachusetts, again, as all of you live and work here for a long time know, is that we have mixed feelings about growth. And in the abstract, if you say, well, do you want, do we want, does everybody want the Massachusetts economy to grow? Probably yes. Does everybody want the Massachusetts economy to continue to add jobs? Probably yes. But when we get down to the details of it, uh, do we people want to see new growth in development in their communities, in their neighborhoods? there's going to be a lot more mixed feeling. And I don't think there's uh, anything wrong with that. We are the third most densely populated state in the country. So uh, we are, I, I resist the notion that we're built out. I think we have plenty of room to do interesting things. But we do have a lot of people uh, living together. And we're concerned about uh, running uh, uh, the effect that what anybody does on our neighbors and our communities. Uh, we're a state that has a great quality of life. So uh, at a community level, people really cherish the character of their communities and they're concerned about change and how it will affect that. Uh, and we have very high environmental standards in Massachusetts, so we do also worry about the effect that growth will have on the quality of our great natural, uh, natural environment here in Massachusetts. Um, so we think that if you're thoughtful about it, um, that you can have new growth and have that kind of economic success that we would all like to have, and it doesn't have to be at the expense of the character of our communities. Uh, and uh, the quality of our natural environment. But if you're going to do it that way, uh, you've got to be smart and thoughtful about it, and you have to plan for it. So uh, for starters, we have been advocating an approach to thinking about growth that we simply call planning ahead for growth, and that we say it would be great, and we're looking for communities to partner with us on this, and we found a lot of communities willing to do it. But we're asking communities to say, don't uh, react to growth, don't wait for growth, don't worry about growth and, and, and try not to think about it until it's actually at your doorstep. But in fact, embrace it and think about what are the opportunities in your community where new growth and development could come in in a way that adds to the character of your community. It may add jobs, it may add tax base, it may add new housing options that allow the next generation of residents in that community to live in the same community that the rest of their family does. There's all kinds of uh, upside uh, to new growth and development if, of, uh, if we think about and set rules for the kind of development that we would like to see. Mm -hmm. And there's some great examples of uh, cities that are doing exactly that. And Paul McMore actually profiled one this morning in the Globe in Somerville, very uh, uh, not uh, planning in order to block uh, growth, but to plan ahead for growth, what would it look like to have new growth in the community of Somerville that would make Somerville a better place uh, to live, work, and play for all its uh, residents? We can have a debate about what that is, but I don't think there should be any debate that we should be engaging those conversations in advance and planning ahead uh, for that. So what can we, a lot of that work needs to do at the local level, but we have tried to be good partners uh, on that. We have worked um, through the various elements we think are important. First is to identify those places in your community where you see new growth and development as being helpful. There's going to be a lot of places in your community that you don't see new growth and development as being very helpful. It could be a natural open space. Uh, it could be a, a residential community that works just fine um, and is uh, in good shape. Uh, so if you look again at what Somerville has done, arguably under Mayor Curtitone, pursuing a pro-growth agenda, but it's not pro-growth all across Somerville. He's picked his spots, Assembly Square, Union Square, to say, let's find the places where there's a consensus we can grow. So identifying those places uh, and then working with the communities to do permitting, uh, that sets the rules in advance and tells developers and investors um, that if they are willing to uh, build at a scale and a type of development, including parking rules, um, that are what the community wants to see, then they will have a prompt and predictable uh, permitting process. Uh, so we work with communities on that. On our side of the ledger, we're focused on infrastructure because we are the third most densely populated state in the country because, like many other states, we have systematically underinvested in our infrastructure in Massachusetts for decades now. Uh, there are not many places in the state where you can imagine significant new growth and development that doesn't put a real burden on the existing infrastructure and realistically is going to have a risk of uh, threatening the character of the community unless we make corresponding infrastructure investments on the public side to prevent that from happening. And our view is that 
uh, city and town budget. Our state budget uh, is tight, uh, but city and town budgets these days are so strapped uh, that realistically those kind of public infrastructure investments are going to have to come uh, primarily from state government, and that's why we are making those kinds of uh, investments, building a new Orange Line stop at Assembly Square, uh, and many other cases all around the state. So uh, if we take that planning ahead approach, identifying places to grow, do the planning and permitting, understand the infrastructure investments and make those investments, uh, we think we can really minimize um, that uh, otherwise apparent dilemma between how we have the state grow and how we maintain its character and quality of life. So we think that's very important, but when you start planning ahead for growth, you also realize that there are some subjects that come up again and again that it's easy to get stuck on. Um, and one of those, for example, is multifamily housing, and one of those is parking. And so it's a tendency, if you're really going to plan ahead, uh, it's important, and the reason you're all here today, I think, is to resist the urge to take those challenging subjects and to put them on a shelf and say, well, that's a hard one. We're not, really, we're not able to develop a community consensus, so we're going to leave that for later. And leaving it for later literally means we're going to wait until the developer comes to us with a proposal, and then we're going to figure out what to do about it. Um, and that's going to defeat the point of creating rules and creating a predictable environment that we think is so uh, necessary to attracting uh, new in investment. So we have urged communities uh, to really uh, include even those more difficult subjects in their upfront uh, planning. Uh, as they think about how they want their communities uh, to grow. On the multifamily housing front, again, as those of you who lived and worked here for many years, you know that for many communities in Massachusetts, uh, multifamily housing uh, is a challenging subject. I think, uh, Mark, the majority of Massachusetts and cities and towns do not allow multifamily housing as of right by zoning anywhere in their community whatsoever. Uh, and so it is a, it's a challenging issue. So, but we have uh, the governor uh, has clearly indicated that we think more multifamily housing is part of the mix of the continued success of our innovation economy. We are, um, have a goal of 10,000 new multifamily housing units uh, per year, a goal that was developed uh, in consultation with Professor Barry Bluestone at Northeastern as being the amount of new multifamily housing, and also with uh, Mark and his team at MAPC, as the amount of new multifamily housing that we need in order to make sure young people and young families uh, want to continue uh, to be here and see their future here in Massachusetts. And frankly, that young talent is going to be the fuel for the continuing success of our innovation economy. So we not only want those young people to be here, um, but we realize that fundamentally affects our competitiveness. So tackling that up front is important. And similarly, parking is an issue that uh, because of the challenge it, uh, it represents, and in some cases it uh, does, um, is the uh, very tangible face of a discussion about new development and the effect it has on existing residents uh, and existing businesses in a community. So it, it's important uh, to tackle that up front and to try to think about it in a way that we can create some rules for ourselves uh, that make sense and not allow it to become an individualized discussion one by one for uh, every project that may come uh, up in the city. So thank you for the work that you're doing here today to focus on parking and particularly innovative parking solutions. Um, I do, uh, one other point about the importance of parking is I think that uh, for many of us, we have been uh, really impressed by uh, this move towards the cities that's happening both in Massachusetts uh, and elsewhere around the country, and whether that's baby boomers or millennials and a lot of more people wanting to live, work, and play in urban environments. Uh, and to some degree, I think that there may be a feeling that that um, makes the parking conversation easier uh, because uh, at least in urban neighborhoods that have a lot of public transit options, uh, it's easier to say, well, we really don't need that much parking uh, because we can env envision people going about our daily lives and really using walking, biking, using public transit uh, as um, most or all of their way of getting around and doing their daily business. Um, so I think that, but it's important for Massachusetts, I think, that we think about parking and development issues. We also realize that for every neighborhood uh, and community in Massachusetts that really has the benefit of that transit-rich support, really, uh, you know, subway or 
or transit that would allow you to really imagine living your daily life entirely on transit. There are a number of other places around the state where we are uh, also talking about how to create a sense of uh, density and vitality, a live, work, and play environment. Um, some of those are town centers and village centers, some close to a Boston, some further out. But realistically, uh, even in the cases where those uh, centers are served by commuter rail or perhaps somewhat by bus service, that's a different situation. Um, and realistically, even despite the investments that the governor has proposed to increase public transit, um, you know, for today and for the next 10 years, those are going to be uh, communities where we want to see more density and more activity, uh, but they probably are not going to have in the short-term future the kind of transit support that really allows everybody uh, to get off having their own car. So when we're talking about creating those kind of situations in town centers and village centers and suburban communities uh, in greater Boston in the MAPC region, I think we have to, we have to it, that's going to be a hard question as well. What's that balance? To what extent uh, can we use parking strategies to encourage people uh, to use public transit and other uh, alternative modes of transportation while understanding that it is, they don't have the transit support and so forth that you may see in some of our more transit rich uh, urban environments and how do we strike uh, that, that balance properly. So uh, thank you for what you do. From our perspective, uh, creating a uh, Massachusetts that is filled uh, with walkable neighborhoods that are uh, vibrant and interesting and places where people can live, work, and play uh, is not only a nice idea, uh, it is in fact absolutely imperative to our being a place uh, where talented people uh, want to live and work uh, for the coming years and therefore uh, critical success to the Massachusetts economy being prosperous for many years to come. Thanks very much. Thank you.